Okay, Mike, tell us what you're doing. Um, culturing yeast that's come off of a pine cone. Actually, uh, Rocky Mountain Pine. Rocky Mountain Pine. Rocky Mountain Pine cone, cut it. Okay. Put in a beer that's a 4% alcohol. I have it sitting in my nightstand, wrapped in a blanket for the last week. So it actually uh, cultured the yeast that was on the pine cone, and it actually blended into the beer. So when you shake it, it actually foams up. Yeah, I noticed that. It's super foamy. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking this. I'm going to put it on Petri dish. First, got to sterilize this. For all you 420 fans out there, you guys know what we do. <laughs> this guy. Dipping it in alcohol. Sterilized. Getting some of the yeasties off of that. So there's enough yeast bodies in that little amount of solution that you can produce a colony. I'll, basically produce a col off of that. I'll start a colony in the petri dish. And you're just kind of painting some. I'm liquid just on painting there. lines across the dish. Let's see if we can get visualization on that. And then let it sit for two weeks. Actually, should see something in about five days. But when it starts getting a nice colony on it, I'll do it again. Put it in another beer at 4% uh, alcohol, and I'll start growing it with some sugar and some starches, some flour, and I'll continue to grow it. And then once I have a nice grown culture, I'll develop that or I'll tweak the actual use of it if I want to use it with a rye. I'll start blending a rye malt up, and I'll start growing it on a rye mash. Yeah, so that it can. It's and then evolved to eat it, that. Evolved at a four percent alcohol for the rye, and if I want to do a twenty percent, I'm sorry. Yeah, if I want to start raising the alcohol and make the yeast more tolerant to that, I'll start increasing each batch as I go through. So the next batch is going to be six percent. The next batch is going okay. to be eight percent. And you're training it and to like survive. Actually, yeah, training it to survive. Mm -hmm. Uh, a cold tolerant yeast strain mm -hmm. um, I'll, I would do the exact same thing depending if I'm using a, a corn, a rye uh, wheat, barley I'll do the exact same thing but I'll put it in a free, uh, refrigerator and put an ink bird on it and I'll start decreasing the temperature each, each batch so the first batch I'll go I'll do it at uh, 85 degrees. The next batch, I'll drop it down to 80 degrees, and I'll keep going down and, and lower and lower until I can get a, a batch that actually ferments at, at 36 degrees. Yeah. I had a, a Scottish cider that I, I fermented at 36 degrees, and I actually it took me a year and a half to get to that temperature, but it's still, you're purposely stressing the environment so that actually, so that it can become stronger. Yep. And more resilient. Yep. It's called uh, they call it ALE Advanced. Laboratory evolution. I am actually forcing the evolution of the the strain by con controlling the conditions. Survival of the fittest. You got there it. You go. Love it. This